can be found at number 176.
and grant us your salvation. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and, and to, to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever <coughs> shall be, world without end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This Mass is offered for Christopher Moran. We shall also have a second collection for the elderly and sick religious sisters. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, they have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, <coughs> my brothers and sisters, may Almighty God have mass on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. 
Her husband, entrusting her heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. <coughs> Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be in favor. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. <coughs> Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and Caesars, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, this parable. A man going on a journey called his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come share your master's joy. Then the one who received, who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter? Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back? with interest on my return. Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I warmly welcome you to this Mass. We celebrate the 33rd Sunday in ordinary time. We are soon concluding liturgical year A, and we shall go to liturgical year B. Actually, next Sunday is Christ the King Sunday, when we shall close this liturgical year A, then we shall go to liturgical year B. And so we are grateful to God that we are close to the end of the liturgical year. And so we can take stock of what we have learned through the liturgical year. What is it that you remember? That during this liturgical year, I've learned this. What is it 
that you can call to memory. He said, during this liturgical year, this happened. And so taking stock of what we have learned, in one study that I've done, that study is called pedagogy, the art of teaching. Teaching happens in three phases. There is preactive teaching, where a teacher prepares a lesson. Then there is interactive teaching, when the teacher is teaching, just like I'm preaching now, actively doing the work. Then there is post-active teaching, where the teacher examines the learners on what they have learned. And so, supposing Jesus came now and said, I'm going to examine you, I'm going to give an exam of what you have been learning all through this liturgical year A. Are you prepared to sit for that exam? Are you ready to engage that exam? Would you pass it? Would you remember of what Christ has been teaching us? And how much have you put into practice of what he has been teaching us? And so on this second last Sunday of the liturgical year, Christ is preparing us for the end, imminent end of the, of the year, but also to think about our life. We have been advised that we should use our talents very well. The talents are from God. Just like we have heard, the master gave out talents to one five, to one two, to one one. And so each of us, in a way, the generosity of God, each of us has received a talent. When you examine your life, you will see a certain uniqueness with yourself. This is your giftedness. I'm good at this. When I prepare me a meal, my husband will say, thank you, you have prepared it very well. When I speak, people will say, this man is a speaker. This is my giftedness. This is my uniqueness. The schools are to help learners to discover their talents. The parents are to help the little ones to discover their giftedness, discover their talents and that we are called to use them very well. The first reading has spoken to us about a wonderful example of a woman who used her talents very well. She's generous. She's devout. She's ready to share her giftedness. An example of somebody who received talents and she's using them very well. The gospel reading has spoken to us about this parable of the talents. When I reflect more about this talent, I think some people are sometimes jealous of other people's giftedness. When you see somebody has this gift and I don't have it, the tendency is to feel jealousy. But when you reflect upon this parable, you will know that the giver gave to each according to what he wanted. And so some people will be more gifted than other people. Socrates, one of the ancient philosophers mentioned, you know, know thyself. You should know thyself. Make an effort to know your strength, but at the same time your limitations. These are my limitations. The master gave to one five, to one two, and to one one as he pleased. This is what I've received. And so I will be content with what I've received. I will not be jealous of other people's achievement and their giftedness. Sometimes people compete unnecessarily. They are not aware of who they are. They are not aware of their giftedness. The master knows why he gave to one five, why he gave to one two, and why he gave to one one. He expects us to be faithful, to use all these talents very well. That at the end, the second reading has spoken to us about the day of the Lord, the day of judgment, the end. When that end will come, I will be able to give an account of how well I will have used my talents. 
the time of judgment, the time of settling accounts as we have heard in the gospel text. And at the end, the master said, in appreciation of these that use their gifts very well, the master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Since we are faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Each of us should be waiting for this kind of remark. We should not be afraid of the end. Instead, we should keep on using our giftedness, our talents, so much so that at the time when the master comes, I will say, what you gave me, I've used it very well. And so today we call to memory all the people that contribute their talents, especially to building God's kingdom, supporting our parish. Look at the lectors. Look at the altar servers. Look at the members of the choir. Look at members of the parish pastoral council. Look at everyone, all of you that come and contribute. Look at this. When you look at the sanctuary, you have been contributing money that you know this sanctuary can appear the way it is. And so thank you to all those that continue to contribute their giftedness for the common good of our parish. And at the same time, when we look at this man who received one talent, when the time of settling accounts came, he was simply giving excuses. And there are people that give these excuses. I don't have time. I can't do this. I can't come. I don't know there is this kind of thing. One time I was speaking to my classmates in class. And say, some people take excuses and said, look, the priest scandalized the flock. And so some people ran out of the church because of their scandal. And I said, supposing everybody's remark, everybody, you know, their life was played on like a screen. You'll find many other people, again, their story wouldn't be different. If you, O oh Lord, would mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? With you is found mercy. And so other people that take excuses in that, just like this person, are not doing well. And so they are called back. They are called to conversion. In the church, there is no room for spectation. Don't say in church, I will simply come and look on and watch what other people are doing. All of us are called to contribute, to do something. One of my teachers in liturgy, Professor Baldovin, he says, liturgy is a team sport. Liturgy is a team sport. But I would even say, the success of a parish is a team sport. Each of us is called to do their part supporting one another, that we can journey together as a family, as a community. My prayer for you, my dear brothers and sisters today, is that each of us will try to know their giftedness and try to see how well we can try to step it up and use it for our own edification, for the good of our families, and for the good of our parish. I think that would be a good takeaway from this Sunday, including other reflections as the Holy Spirit will continue to guide you to reflect. This is our prayer through Christ our Lord. We now all rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things we are made, for us men and for us salvation. 
he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the Pope's monthly intention that the Holy Father, as he fulfills the mission, may continue to accompany the flock entrusted to him with the help of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Sean, that he may see an increase in the number of good and holy priests ordained for Boston. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children of the Holy Land, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of us who are struggling with forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and in distress in any way, especially those listed in the bulletin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the souls of the faithfully departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember in a special way Christopher Moran, for whom this Mass is being celebrated. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us to continue using our gifts for the growth of our very selves, for the growth of our families, for the growth of our parish and all the communities where we are members. We pray to the Lord. For all those that have used their talents to support us, we pray to the Lord. We make this our prayer through Christ our Lord. Cry. 
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with a loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true, right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Shona Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servants, those that have supported this parish, those that have supported us with their giftedness, with their talents, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Remember Moran, for, which, for whom this Mass is offered for. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mass on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, Saint Jude, our patron, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be coherent to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold, him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not whether that you should enter under my roof.
must bestow all gifts that from the Spirit flow, all gifts that from the Spirit flow. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of, he, of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and to the of our death. The Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wish you a good new week. Our closing hymn can be found at number 173. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 4.